Hey, welcome back to the Dan Der Flieger uh, workshop. Today, the workshop is in Tampa. I'm in a hotel room uh, traveling for business. What we're going to do today is talk about how to assemble the uh, angle of attack sensor, uh, my most uh, recent edition of that. I should mention that about a year and a half ago, I did this same video with a previous version, and the flight testing on that particular device didn't go quite as planned. I think I need to work on some aerodynamics on the uh, wind vane a little bit. It's kind of really flapping at slower speeds. My hypothesis is that in a high angle of attack scenario, the air flowing around the bottom of the sensor was deflected toward the bottom of the wind vane, while the air flowing toward a more open area over the top of the rounded body was likely creating a low pressure area pulling the wind vane upwards. So this new version has a flat side and the wind vane is farther from the body. The first thing I'll do is go ahead and open up a uh, web browser here. Starting here at the uh, GitHub repository um, on the right on the uh, main uh, the master branch of the uh, AOA 3D models um, repository. Um, obviously here's the readme. It kind of tells you uh, what all is in there so feel free to read through that. Um, you'll also notice um, right in the root of this uh, repository here is a file called parts list. These are parts that uh, you'll have to purchase uh, in order to uh, build one of these AOA uh, sensors. So if we go back up uh, into our root directory here, and I've exported all of the SolidWorks uh, files um, and put them into a 3MF format or STL format. Um, in most cases, STL is probably what you want to use. 3MF would work in some cases as well, depending on what your slicing software is. But STL is pretty, uh, pretty open and used by a lot of those. So we'll go in there first. All right, so let's uh, start putting stuff together here. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, put my um, electronics in. Um, so I'm going to start with the bottom half of the battery uh, box here. Uh, the first thing I'll do is put in my uh, 12 millimeter uh, switch. It's a, basically a push button switch. So I'll pull that out. And if you look down inside of here, there's a little tiny notch um, where the nut is going to have room to spin once you get this in place. Go ahead and put this in. It's kind of countersunk here, so it should fit in there nicely. Put the nut in place and then just kind of spin it on from inside. As you'll notice there's a small hole here in the side, um, so I'll just go ahead and take this uh, little LED here. Shove that into the hole. All right, and then I can plug my uh, switch in. Space in there to be able to push that in. Or sensor will slide down in between these two little brackets right here and uh, I should mention that uh, I'm putting it so that where it says VCC out and ground is facing to the left here. So there's enough space below here that these wires can come through without uh, getting cut off um, and the chip will only go down until it stops and that kind of puts it kind of perfectly centered through this uh, hole here. For the uh, battery there's a little uh, notch here where it can go inside of here and that kind of locks into place here. And if you look at the other end of this, uh, there's another little notch here. When we put this on top, it'll lock this into place so it doesn't go, so you can't pull it out when you pull out the batteries. It'll actually hold into place. The Arduino here, um, you want to put it so that the USB uh, connector here goes towards the front. So it should sit down nice and flush into the bottom of that. Make sure all the wires are so that out of the way so they won't bump into your shaft here that's going to rotate. Make sure that this is kind of where it goes. There we go. 
So if you look down inside of here, this battery is uh, kind of pinched into place. It's not going to go anywhere, the battery connector. And then these batteries can just slide in there and click into place. And then pull it out. It doesn't move. It still stays in, in the right spot. If you look down inside of here, there's a little white piece of plastic. Uh, it has a small step in it um, that goes, the, the wider side goes up next to the coupler here um, and then the step that's kind of smaller goes up against the bearing and what that does is it prevents the outside ring of the bearing from rubbing up against this coupler it kind of gives a little space there so it runs smoothly um, you'll need to print off two of those um, one goes uh, towards the coupling and the other one towards the flange um, with the same thing the wider side goes up against the flange and the uh, bearing up against that so your bearings will end up like this where they're kind of spread apart and only uh, rubbing, not even rubbing, but rolling against the uh, plastic spacers there. All right, pull this back apart so we can put our shaft into place. Now, the, probably the trickiest part of assembling all of this, there's just a couple of Allen bolts on here. Uh, because it uses a magnet to uh, change the uh, angle on our um, receiver here, um, you've got to glue that magnet down into the tip of this. Now it's already, because we're using a 5 millimeter shaft, that's the same size as the magnet. These are obviously a ferrous material, the screws that are here. So what I do is just put in the screws that are as far away from the magnet as possible so it doesn't interfere. And then I use a little bit of super glue around the outside of the magnet to, uh, to hold it in place. Um, if you look at the tip of my magnet here, um, you'll probably see a couple little red marks. Uh, that's my north and south pole of the magnet. Um, I just kind of figured that out by kind of touching something metal to it. And you can kind of tell what side is magnetic and, and then here in the middle it's not so much. Um, I did that so that I could put the screws here opposite of the poles. So the poles running this direction and the screws are running this direction so that they're less likely to interfere here. I can pull this out loosen this it comes apart. This is actually a stainless steel shaft so it's non-magnetic. Tighten that in. Eventually what you're going to end up wanting to do is uh, loosening one of these once it's in here to kind of get it lined up correctly. Um, and then you'll have to cut off the shaft. They, I think they come in, I think they're, I don't know, 10 centimeters or something long. Um, so I kind of put it in there, got it all lined up, and had the shaft kind of sticking out the end. Um, and after I got it all sized up correctly, then I cut it off. Some of the paint has been scraped off of the, this flange here. And that's because I used a hacksaw right against that so I could get it just as close as possible without uh, poking out at all. And then I think I took a file and filed that down as well just to make sure that it was uh, nice and smooth here. Once you put this in, uh, it should fit down inside of the, uh, the holes here. Um, there's a couple of sort of open areas here that I've cut out and it's just right to be able to put these uh, bearings into um, and then you can always um, so if this was a brand new one right like I'd have this screw loose and I could slide this in so that it's it's pretty tight you don't want it like super tight because otherwise you might put a little friction on these bearings and they won't turn um, so keep it a little tiny bit loose just so there's maybe I don't know you know, two or three thousandths of an inch play in there. Um, maybe more than that, maybe five, as much, as many as five maybe would be okay. Um, and then tighten this down until it's, it doesn't move anymore um, so that it rolls and stays snug and uh, solid all the way through the shaft. Um, so once you've done all that, this is pretty much ready to, to go back together here now. Um, again, just make sure your wires are out of the way and everything's locked into place. There we go. And that's what it should kind of look like. Um, if we put a battery in, uh, let's see if it's still working. I'll push the battery to turn it on and that should start flashing here in a second, which it does. And so your shaft here, as this turns, you can see it turns the shaft on the inside. There's a uh, magnet in the end of this and as it goes over the top of the sensor here, that's what has it uh, report back into the Arduino. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put screws back into place here so we can screw this all together. Thank you. 
All right. Um, and then the next thing probably to assemble that will be good, I think, would probably be this end cap back here that goes on the back. Um, so you've got the battery lock that's going to go into this end cap. And there's a small hole inside of the cap here. And this is just a spring. I think that I got this out of a like a pen. Like, you know, I'm sure everybody in their home has a, an old, you know, click pen that doesn't work anymore. I know I've got probably a hundred of them sitting, you know, in the kitchen <laughs> in a little cup. Um, so I just basically stole one of those uh, springs out of there. And then there's a hole in each of these parts, one down in there, one in the back of this. Um, and so those two holes made up on that. And then you put a screw one of these M3 screws down inside of here. Basically this just screws in until it just stops. You don't have to make it super tight, but um, you can see that the spring now lets that open and close um, and we'll keep some tension on it. If you look at this locking ring here, um, so there's a screw that comes down inside of here as well. Um, I've got these kind of screws in place so I remembered which ones go where, but there is a screw that goes into here. Um, and you screw it in from the side. And what that's for is that when you close this up, that screw going through the top there, that's what actually clicks in and locks uh, this bit here. will like lock onto that screw and hold it in place so it doesn't open or close anymore. Unless you push on this unlock button and then it will. So I'll go ahead and put this into place. The hinge goes on the bottom of this. So I'm just going to put this in here. And there's six screws. Um, usually, for some reason, I'm missing these two screws. I uh, was probably playing with something and didn't replace them. But anyway, there would be two more screws here that I don't have with me right now. So this one screw here in the top right here, it goes in a bit farther than the rest of these do, and that's just so that if you needed to, you could pull out this screw up here without pulling it all apart. Um, it should go in far enough that it sinks down, and then you can still pull out this long screw that goes down to the side. There we go. So that's what that should look like when you have the uh, locking ring on there. Obviously there's a, a hinge here. So I'm going to just lock that into place. put on this uh, front cover here. Um, I'll just show you this, but um, there's a little notch up here at the top and that actually goes upwards and it will cover up this um, USB port here. Um, I left this available um, so that if you were to um, decide you wanted to reprogram something on it or whatever, you can actually pull this off easily with just a couple of screws and then you have access into your Arduino. Um, so you can easily go in there and uh, reprogram it right while it's still sitting inside the body without disassembling the whole thing. Um, so I'll go ahead and leave that off for now. Um, and instead I'm going to install our wind vane. I have a couple of motorcycle uh, weights, a quarter ounce um, motorcycle weights that slip down inside of here. I should say motorcycle tire weights. So you'd use this to balance your motorcycle tire. That's what I purchased them for. Um, and they were sitting in my toolbox and I thought, oh, that's pretty good size and shape. If you don't have any of these motorcycle weights, um, you, I mean, you can probably just find a piece of steel in your garage or whatever and cut it to the right size um, or fill this with something else. I don't even know. So I'm just going to go ahead and tighten those screws into their corresponding nuts, but not tighten them down all the way yet. And then the hole in the back side of this goes into here. Alright, so it's on there nice and tight. There's a slot here for the wind vane uh, shaft to go through. We kind of want that facing kind of straight forward or straight back. 
So what we can do is we can loosen up one of the screws here on this inside part here. And then we can kind of turn that until it's where we want it. And what you want to look for is this right here where it says sensor angle. Uh, I don't know if you can see that or not here, but uh, where it says sen sensor angle here is supposed to calibrate it angle. Try to get that as close to zero as you can before you tighten this thing back up. You can just kind of put this other end cap on the back here. Okay, there's a completed wind vane. Uh, the last thing we have to do is mount this uh, onto the flange. Before we tighten down these screws, we want to kind of figure out where the middle of this is, and you can do that by weight. Obviously right now the tip is a little too heavy, uh, so we'll slide this back a little bit. It's still a little bit heavy, so we'll continue sliding it back. It's pretty well balanced right there. pretty good there. Um, so I'm just going to put my nuts on the back end of the uh, flange screws here. And then the very last uh, part again is this cap that in there and it actually uh, fits pretty snug like almost without even needing screws it'll kind of fit in there and kind of hold itself in place for you. Alright so there you go there's a completed uh, angle of attack sensor. Uh, it seems like everything's working alright. The only thing I didn't show is um, before obviously you do all of these things you want to put on your mount. Uh, in this case I'm just going to leave it off but um, in your case, you'll probably want to put that on before you make the two halves and uh, put on all these other parts. Um, and that's all going to kind of depend on what your aircraft looks like and the mount that you build for it. Um, but that's the completed project right there. All right, well, hopefully that was helpful for you. I apologize for the uh, cold. Uh, I've been sick for the last uh, week or so and still had to go on a trip uh, for work. Um, so hopefully uh, you're able to hear me and understand what I'm saying and uh, hopefully this video has been helpful for you. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please consider uh, subscribing, uh, using the like button, and uh, commenting. If you have questions, feel free to ask. Um, I'm more than happy to answer those questions, uh, and we'll see you on the next one.